speak. He uh, is not it's speak. recording. Alright, now you gotta follow me. Because I'm going to, uh... Alright, here's my 8 gig SD card class 4. Now I'm going to show you how to set this up. Alright. And this should be pretty simple. Um, that. This is Linux Mint. This is not Windows. Put the SD card in the slot. And it's detected. I got all this stuff. Now what you do is I'm going to make sure this is blank. So I'm going to uh, run Gparted. Alright. I'm just going to format this. Make sure that this is all empty. Um, run out the device. Alright, we're going to delete this. Alright, it's empty now. 7.4 gig free. It's unallocated uh, of this 8 gig SD card. What I remember is we create a new partition. Created as FAT32. Um, and then I'm just going to label it as XBMC. Alright. And then complete the operation. I can do it later I and it all operations complete successfully. I could screenshot this later and then dub it in the video and do a better quality. Okay. So we got our uh, SD card. Of course here it is. It's it's formatted but you know there's nothing on it. So what we do is Alright, we open up uh, XBMC here. And downloads, Raspberry Pi, distros, very good. I mean, just take these files. It's just simple. We just copy them over. Oh, these ELF files. These are configurations to boot, and with the various different memory splits. 128 meg for um, graphics. 128 meg for system memory, uh, which is the power performance mode for all the high power graphics to do all your. Uh, video decoding and heavy 3D gaming. This one right here, the um, 192, is supposed to be the default, which is it gives you 192 meg of system RAM for just typical uh, usage and uh, 64 meg of RAM left over for to use for video. You can do some 3D gaming, a little bit of you know video decoding, but you know it's typical you know for what you'd regularly encounter. And then 240, uh, what's this 240 meg start? What would that give? Um, uh, let's see, 2556 plus 2.0. It gives 16 meg of graphics memory. That's weird because the other one was like 224. What it does is gives, gives the bare minimum, you know, with this configuration, gives the bare minimum graphics memory. That's weird. Um, on the other, okay. So I'm going to copy this from the Berry Boot folder, and we just copy it on to the, you know, SD card. I mean, look, there's done basically. I mean, we're looking at a total of 27.4 meg. That's what this is. Hopefully, it's not copying that. We'll know because what we do is safely go drive. Yep, that is finished. So I can shut down this computer. I mean, to copy like 27 meg is pretty quick, right?
Yeah. And this is a class 4 SD card, which is among the slowest that you typically see. I think class 2 is the slowest. And class 4 is rated for, to run at at least 4 megabyte per second. Uh, but that that's what the minimum requirement is. I mean, they can make them to run faster if they want. I mean, and they I think they do. Uh, take this S this 8 gig SD card that we prepared with uh, Berry Boot, and we put it inside the Raspberry Pi. Just being extra careful because I just got this thing a few weeks ago. All right, now we go to um, turn the thing on. And uh, it automatically powers on the TV because that's how I got the TV set up is to power on upon HDMI. So that's all typical. I got connected to the internet. Uh, you'll want the internet for that. And this is the first thing that comes up. And let's see. Did you see green borders at the top of the bottom of the screen? No, you didn't see them, right? No. Alright, okay. Your area, uh, Indianapolis, you know, Indiana, no. I'm going to put Louisville, Kentucky. Keyboard layout is United States. And you see this is completely graphical. Uh, it's just point and click, alright. All that's confirmed. So we click OK. Now this here, I believe, um, yes, this is our device, our, U our storage. Um, EXT4, no uh, disk card. Uh, let's see what options should I do. Just, um, I can do B BTRFS, which would be a pretty good file system. I'm going to do EXT4. I'm going to format. Now it's saving the boot files to memory. And then it's copying boot files to storage. Finish writing boot files to disk. And this process didn't take very long. Formatting data partition. And then you'll see what it uh, what it does. EXT4 is about four years old now. Uh, it's pretty good, but hopefully BT. I might try BTRFS sometimes. It's supposed to be like the file system of the future. It's supposed to be pretty good. Actually, this is what takes some of the time right here. It's formatting that. You can, uh, you can see the lights on the Raspberry Pi, they're just blinking away. And, uh, what's that one that's blinking the most to the far right? It's the OK light, but, uh, yeah. And, uh, I should have a crust case for it. Oh yeah, you can look at that case if you want. That's you know Super Nintendo cartridges. Three of them. The back. And um, I want try. They're a little bit misaligned. Now I I can try again on it, but I can cover up a lot of that stuff with epoxy putty and then re you know I mean re sculpt it and make it look a little bit better. And but yeah, three high. I mean you think that's gonna be enough ventilation? I mean should be enough beaks. Oh yeah, I mean, okay, it's finished writing the disk. Okay, there's that. Now, update uh, Berry Boot uh, to latest version. Would you like to upgrade? Well, they found a new version of it. Yes. Alright, and it's grabbing it from the internet. Now, my connection is uh, 20 megabit, so it's grabbing this at about a quarter of my speed. But it's only got to grab 21.3 megabyte, so it's not taking very long. But it never it never says any ETA data, you know, like how long it's going to take. Um, and hopefully this video is less than 10 minutes or whatever, so that I can put on my new YouTube channel, which is Beeklebotics. I file system extracting update to boot partition.
so I'm mounting boot partition and finishing writing to disk. It's not disk, it's SD card, but I'm going to synchronize plug, press close to reboot. Oh, it displays that colors, yeah. Operating system installer. You're going to add an OS. And here's the choice. I can get Debian Wheezy Raspbian, which is the official operating system of the Raspberry Pi that's put out by the Raspberry Pi Foundation. Open Elec, which is good. It's it's basically all it does is runs XBMC. Uh, Puppy Linux, uh, which is lightweight. It's, a, it's known for being a really good lightweight Linux distribution. Uh, Razbrazer. Now this one, uh, it's another alternative. It's a Linux distro for the Raspberry Pi. I haven't tried it out yet, but uh, now here's Sugar. Um, you know, for a lap one laptop per child. And uh, LTSP Thin Client Berry Terminal. Tom might play around with that. Uh, oh, oh, this one just showed up. This wasn't on there originally. Berry Web Server. It's only 5 meg for the operating system. Lightweight web server software bundle. Oh, you can take your Raspberry Pi and use it as a web server. So how many operating systems can you get off of this? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. You get six choices right now. Huh? Seven. Seven choices. I'm going to choose Open Elec which is a media center and it runs uh, XBMC. Uh, I'm doing about a quarter of my internet connection speed. But, uh, you know, I, I looked on here and you can, with Berry Boot, it'll let you install multiple Raspberry Pi Linux operating system distributions on the same SD card and choose from at boot time. And, um, now it's got to grab almost 72 meg. Um, and it wouldn't have taken this long if I didn't like format the thing, you know, reformat to blanket. If I would start out with blank when it wouldn't have taken much time. Anyway, and to get the update on here. Like bronchial child? <laughs> you, you don't even know if that's beef. <laughs> so anyway, but you see how easy this is, right? Yeah. And matter of fact, if it wasn't for the update, it'd be even easier. And I, I nobody done this. I'm like the only person around here in this area that owns a Raspberry Pi. That you know. That yeah, that I know of. Uh, I heard that they got them in Louisville, but I mean Harrison County. I mean, who do you think in Harrison County would have one? Nobody. Yeah, I mean, I'd be the first one. I mean, I've talked to people around town. They never seen it before. They're like, wow, that's really cool. Wow. How that dude was at Walmart. And I literally, I literally have like a sound card at home that's bigger than that. Yeah, the, the, most sound cards are bigger than that. Yeah. Uh, the only thing that would be smaller than that might be a network card. I mean, it's going to be longer because it has to fit a slot, but it'll be more narrow. All right, open elec. Mm -hmm. There's our operating system. Now I see you can add another OS here. We, I mean, if we got space, we can add another operating system. I can add the web server on there if I wanted to. And one of these days, I might get me 32 gig and put several on there. And we're going to make it default, of course, because we only have one operating system on there. Now we exit this. And I think it's going to, yeah, it's going to reboot. And I love that colored screen. Changing the mem split. That, that's the biggest thing that gets on my nerves about the Raspberry Pi is the memory split configuration. I wish they just have, you know, if they would have just, I wish they would have just dedicated 128 megabyte of, of memory to the graphics processor like you need so you got full capability of it and then dedicated 256 megabytes of memory for the system so you got the memory you need to run your programs so you'd have full capability of the thing at all times. Um, now let's say if they had a little more pop, um, a little more powerful version like a one gigahertz ARM uh, Cortex dual core, you know, at least 512 megs of system RAM and at least 256 megs of graphics RAM. 
This is XBMC. Now, it's a little bit um, stretched out. Uh, maybe that's because I enabled over a scan, but I, I can redo it. It takes a few minutes. Oh, yeah, the weather. I've played around with XBMC for a few minutes on other occasions. It feels like 21 minutes. Oh. Um. You can edit it. Yeah. Fetching 4K. Now this is getting the weather data from uh, Weather Underground. Uh, which is good because that gets it very, very local. Um, you know, locals in like within your county where you live at, and sometimes within your town. It's not like the Weather Channel where it's like, you know, the nearest big city might be featured, and that's supposed to represent a whole area. Now the next time, now it's in you know, like metric or whatever, you know, so Celsius. But like the next time it boots, it'll correct itself because that's what I notice. Um, and uh, yeah, New Albany is getting data from there, but it'll it'll change it like next time. Um, let's see. Come on. Come on. Bronchial child. Yeah, you're not about to be. You don't? That's sad. Ancient astronauts. Ancient ass, ancient ass, ancient ass, ancient astronauts. Well, what I can always do is, yeah, you're right, I can edit it, but, or I can upload it to Nogglefest, because I can do an hour on there. Except the wrestle technology. Or um, more. And then, uh, look, see, it mounted the, uh, USB flash drive, 16 gig, and uh, no, I just rebooted. And see, you notice there's no login because you basically can't really, you know, there's no options on here that would let you screw anything up. I mean, you just like open this file, you know, play this um, media file. Okay, it's got the 128 meg. Um, memory split so it's got 128 meg for graphics memory that means it's expected to play blu-ray quality video and all that and um, it's ready for that and then it's got 128 megs of uh, system RAM and uh, here we are I mean it just rebooted now I'm back um, hey it's got the proper time too I'm just using a keyboard, but you can use like a media remote kind of thing. TV shows and all that. Yeah. Oh. Which one do you think I'll play? Mm hmm. Um, and it shows previews of each of these as you go through them. It's pretty cool, actually. And I'll let show. Um, you know what? Like, um, let's show something that we can't get in trouble for copyright infringement. Let's go to these and. Um, It's an EU advertisement. These are TV shows. Probably this one because it's not on TV, right? It looks like... I'm just saying, somebody will claim copyright infringement. 
cause a problem. This is more like surveillance. Wayne County Court Security Officer Adam Dodson had only witnessed in training videos. I've worked there for three and a half years, and this is the first time anything that serious has happened. But watch again as he jumps into action when Melissa Hardwick lunges at family court judge Jennifer Edwards. <laughs> and even once by his family court. Picture, on top of her on the courtroom floor, she continues to fight back. <laughs> Surprised she didn't throw out a rape allegation. The judge is right there. <laughs> Once again, you're looking at things through lens of logic. Once you look at it through their uh, poop mouthish lens. Oh, I didn't know it would do this. <laughs> this is some neat software. Now, I reluctantly played that video because it was the only one of that list that looked like it didn't have any copyright issue stuff, you know, because this is YouTube I'm talking about. I've got some movies on here. I got Idiocracy and something else. God bless America. But yeah, but like if I were to play those, it's copyrighted stuff. What I want to do is I want to play Buck, uh, like Big Buck Bunny. That's like the ideal thing because it's like Disney Pixar style stuff. And. There's like no, I mean, there's like no copyright on it or whatever, and that's why Eben Upton of the Raspberry Pi Foundation, he shows that video to demonstrate it because it's basically like a free open source video and that sort of thing. Um, and let me just close it, uh, power system off, and so you can show how nicely the device will function, but not have to worry about you know MPAA getting on your tail. Alright, and that concludes this video about how to install operating systems on Raspberry Pi.